Hey everybody and welcome back to the Pierce Family Channel. If you're new here, my name is Jade and I'm a mom to a one-year-old Isaac. So during nap times and after Isaac gets to bed, I tend to watch a little bit of YouTube. Louise Pentland recently did the new mom tag or the new mum tag. Even though she's got one quadrillion subscribers. I thought I would sit down and do it for my channel anyway. So I'm just gonna jump right in. Favorite mom hack. I don't know if this is really considered a hack, but I'm pretty good at redirecting. I think it had something to do with the few years I was in teaching. I've always noticed that Isaac's mood can do a 360 when I redirect well enough. In particular, if he is having a really bad day, I usually do one of two things. Lately, we have been going for a lot of walks. Pop him in the stroller. We have a really walkable, family-friendly neighborhood, so I walk around a fair bit with him. Um, even like 20 minutes out of the house, there's so much that can be said for some fresh air and just like a change of scene. And along with the change of scene, one thing that I do with him sometimes, and I've shown this in videos before, is that if he is just in a terrible mood, what I like to do is take him, bring him to his bathtub and just, I don't run any water, but I just put all of his bath time toys in there with him and he loves it. I think it once again has something to do with just that change of scenery. So that so far has always been a very good reset button for the both of us. Most embarrassing mom moment. I honestly don't even know that I can say I've had one of these. I don't get embarrassed easily. If I'm doing something that could be considered embarrassing, I feel like maybe the other people in this situation are embarrassed. What part of the day do you love the most? I have a lot of favorite parts of the day. This definitely has not always been the case, but I think my favorite part of the day right now is the time from like dinner, between dinner and bedtime. So we're old people, we eat dinner around 5.30, 5.45, just so we can eat at the same time as Isaac. And then Isaac normally, we start getting him ready for bed around 6.45. But that hour in between, whenever we get to just like kind of watch him play, and he's pretty good at playing independently. And if he's not, he wants to be up on the couch kind of climbing on us. But it is so much fun just to see his little brain going and going during that last hour right before bedtime. What part of the day do you like the least? The two hours, I guess it'd be two hours, um, between second nap and the time Chase gets home. So usually that varies, but at that point he's kind of tired of me being around him and kind of directing him away from things that are dangerous, but I'm always so grateful when Chase walks through the door and Isaac is always so happy to see him because I can tell he's just like, okay, mom, we've had enough of each other today. I'm gonna go play with dad. You go get dinner ready. The worst thing someone said to you when you were pregnant. I have a whole video about my like pregnancy pet peeves and like the fact that people just say whatever they are thinking whenever you are pregnant, like, you could be a stranger, you could be their best friend, you could be anyone, but as soon as they find out you're pregnant, they think that gives them a free pass to like say just literally anything. I'm not gonna name names on this one because I don't find it necessary, but one thing that stuck with me that really bugged me when people said this, and it only happened a couple of times, but it really annoyed me, was something along the lines of, are you sure you're not having twins? Yeah, I'm sure. Pregnant women can already feel so self-conscious about their body, and I already felt like a whale. One, I was already overweight when I got pregnant, and two, this wasn't even said to me until like the last trimester, so of course I felt humongous. And then having somebody say that to you is just like, what it boils down to is they're not even considering how it would make me feel. They're just saying things that pop into their head for whatever reason. Baby name you didn't agree on. I honestly can't think of one. For the most part, Chase and I picked out Isaac's name years ago before we were even married, before we even thought about getting pregnant. We said, this will be the name of our first daughter and this will be the name of our first son. So whenever people ask, before we knew his gender, what his name would be. We said, well, this if he's a girl, this and Isaac Mark if he's a boy. We really didn't have an argument about it. We 
have a much more difficult time talking about a hypothetical second son because we have no idea what his name would be. Do you co-sleep? Something you bought but never used. I honestly can't even think of anything. Something we bought. Oh, I know. We registered for this really awesome travel system and somebody ended up buying it for us. So it had a stroller, it came with his infant car seat, and it came with a base. So you could install the base in the car and move the car seat in and out of the car without having to get in there and like strap eyes again. We could put him in his car seat outside the car stick the car seat in and he would be safe. We decided we wanted a base like that for each car. So we bought a second base because it wasn't included and that was really only about 35 bucks. We bought a second one so we could put it in Chase's car. We installed it in Chase's car and didn't use it once. We always have used my car just because it's bigger. So if we're going to do something as a family when he was little with that car seat, we probably needed the space in the trunk because we were going grocery shopping or we needed the space in the trunk for the stroller because we would be doing a lot of walking around. My car was bigger, so we always defaulted to my car and we never used the car seat in his. Three hospital bag must-haves. Really long phone charger cord. You use your phone a lot in the hospital when you've just had a baby and you're texting people, you're taking pictures, you're on the phone talking to people. And I use my phone a lot when we're in the hospital and whenever it needed to be charged or if I needed to use it overnight especially there might not be a plug as close to the hospital bed as there is to a bed like in my house. I had a six foot long cord to charge my phone with and it was amazing. Some type of like entertainment for those hours when you feel like you've caught up on sleep but your baby is still sleeping. I brought my laptop so Chase and I could watch YouTube and Netflix whenever I was nursing the baby and we were just staring at a wall because we were there for two days. Any specific toiletries you want for that first shower after you have a baby. We provide some stuff. Um, our hospital had some of those like little shampoo and conditioner bottles, but I really, really enjoyed having my, my personal shampoo whenever I got to take that first shower after Isaac was born. Are you a routine mom or a go with the flow mom? And what does bedtime look like? So I would definitely say during the day, I'm more of go with the flow. I'm very good at reading Isaac's cues at this point. We've been at home together for over a year. So I know when he's tired, I know when he's hungry. We don't have to eat exactly at 11 a.m. We don't have to do anything at one particular time until bedtime. At bedtime, we stick to kind of a strict schedule. So we give him his cow's milk and a sippy cup around 6.30, um, unless it's a night we're bathing him. On a night we bathe him, we give him the milk before the bath, so maybe around six o'clock. And then we like to let him have a nice long bath because he loves bath time, because after he gets clean, he likes to play in the water, splash around, play with those bath time toys. So we let him have an extra long bath and then always every day at 6 45 we bring him into his bedroom and start getting him ready for bed we brush his teeth he takes his vitamin d he gets his diaper changed he gets lotion he gets put into his footy pajamas chase will rock him in his chair and i sit on the floor and read harry potter we are currently on the goblet of fire because really we only get through a couple of pages a night because by the time the light goes off and I kind of start reading, he is out. He loves to rest his little head on his dad's chest. That is such a nice time of day for all of us. What type of labor did you have slash what pain relief did you choose? I knew that if I could, I wanted to have a vaginal birth. And in the end, that is what we ended up doing. Luckily, I was able to do that even though I was in the hospital for nearly 24 hours before Isaac was actually born. My plan in labor was always just to delay the epidural as long as I could. When talking with my doula about it, she asked me if I thought I could do it without the epidural. Like if I got to a point where I hadn't had it would I be okay just going through without it? I think if I can make it to whatever point that is, whether that's transition or just like getting more centimeters, whatever that may be, would have attempted to go through natural birth, but ended up, because it took me so long to dilate, I ended up getting an epidural, which was really always part of the plan from the beginning. I was never the type of person who went in saying, I would never get an epidural. At some point, 
after being in labor for a few days, I was ready just to, to be able to rest and kind of calm myself down to transition into the time when Isaac was born. That's another video I've been thinking about making for a long time, Isaac's birth story. I actually had the whole thing written down in a notebook for him that I planned to give him at some point in his life. But if you guys are interested in a birth story from Isaac's birth, let me know in the comments below. Have you ever been mom shamed? I have certainly never had anyone say something to my face. However, I've definitely heard people talk about my decisions when they thought I could not hear. Like around the time Isaac was about one month old, I heard somebody through a wall say, that Isaac only cried because he knew I would pick him up. And that's really annoying to me for a lot of reasons. I've also talked about this in a video before, but a one month old cannot manipulate you. And that kind of does bug me, but more than that, I feel like I'm more mom shamed by society and the fact that it's kind of ingrained into motherhood and part of me just lets it get to me sometimes is probably the worst part of mom shaming for me. Like knowing that there are people out there that get upset when a mom breastfeeds in public is definitely part of why I try not to, or tried not to in the past anyway. Isaac was uncomfortable under a cover, but I would use one when I was in public because that's how I felt society wanted me to act. And I do regret that in some ways. And I think with the next baby, when we have them, that will change a lot. The fact that it's a factor at all is what annoys me more. The biggest challenges you've faced since becoming a mom. I think definitely it's just been the change of lifestyle. For the first six months of Isaac's life, we contact napped every single time he took a nap. That was a lot. That was pretty hard on me being constantly attached to him. All of that newborn like kind of isolation, getting used to being a stay at home mom stuff was the hardest thing I've faced so far. The best bit of advice I've ever been given and the biggest piece of advice I'd give to a new mom. I mean, honestly, a year out, I can't remember that much advice that I like appreciated receiving. I definitely agree with along the lines of what Louise said in her video of like, you do you. You make the choices that feel right for your relationship with your baby and trust your gut and don't let the naysayers out there control what you do and control your relationship because in the end, it's all gonna fall back on you. And the bit of advice I give um, to new moms, I really try not to overstep because I know how annoyed I got when I was pregnant when people are like, oh, such and such, get some sleep while you still can. That's not helpful. But one thing I do say to people is take more pictures than you think you need to, especially taking more video than you would imagine you'd want because there are things Isaac did as a little newborn that he never did again after he hit a certain age and hasn't done and probably will never do and I do not regret having it on video. And maybe it's something you won't realize you'll miss till it's gone. Like when he was little, he made this really high pitched squeaking sound that actually a lot of newborns make. I'm so glad I have video of it because I might have otherwise just forgotten that he made that noise to begin with, just to be able to remember what it was really like when he was little. Who is your mom crush slash who do you tag? My number one biggest mom crush is every single member of my February 2018 Bumpers Facebook group. We're a private group, so you can't see us, but I love those women so, so much. There's no way I would come, I would have come out the first year of Isaac's life as sane and as secure in my motherhood as I am without these women. Other than Louise, who I adore, I'm obsessed with Flip Side of the Moon. I have recently w started watching Lepke's Life. I love Delilah and she's about to have her second little baby. And I also really love Caitlin Nyer, so. That's all I've got for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.